Hey guys, welcome to the channel. We're doing something a little bit different today. I wanted to show you guys what I do during the day. This is my day job. This is what allows me to do everything else that I do on YouTube and gaming and for Rust and all this other stuff. So let's get right into it, all right? So we're working on a 2018 Dodge Ram and I'm gonna just do a real quick overview of what we're currently looking at in the vehicle. So just a real quick overview of the truck. I mean, it's a, it's a 2018 Ram. We've all seen them. We all know what they're all about. And uh, this is the interior. Obviously we're maintaining the factory head unit and replacing speakers and adding some amps, adding some subs. And yes, he already currently has an amp in here. It's uh, not really installed. It's just kind of sitting there. So obviously we're gonna fix that. We're going to be replacing the wiring. This is actually all the gear that we're putting in. So JL4 channel plus the JL monoblock that's already in there uh, that we'll be reinstalling. JLC5 components, we'll be running them active off the four channel. Stinger four gauge kit, as much dynamat as we could possibly cram into this truck. Of course, we're gonna give him a JL base knob so that he can control his subs independently from the system. And the JL tweak 88 and AP4CH41 to get our signal out of the factory head unit. So I'll be showing you guys step by step the different processes that we're taking along the way. Uh, we're gonna, the plan is, and plans are always meant to be destroyed, but we're gonna do our best. Uh, the plan is we're gonna start at the front and work our way back, and uh, hopefully by end of day two, uh, we'll get started on the construction of the enclosure. So first up, we're gonna start at the door locations. We're gonna be pulling out the factory six by nines in both the front doors. And we're gonna be running his tweeters up on the dash in the factory three and a half inch location. So I'll get started on that and I'll show you guys how it goes. All right, so now we've removed the factory door panel off of both front doors. And uh, so this is what it looks like inside the, the passenger side door of a 2018 Dodge Ram. This is the factory 6x9 location that we're going to be using for our JLC 5 6.5. So obviously we're going to see some trickery and some fabrication done there to make that work. And uh, we're also going to be laying some dynamite in this door. So we actually have to remove this, this panel, this entire panel, so that we can get to the exterior uh, side of the door so that we can start laying some dynamite. All right, so after a couple of minutes of uh, removing the interior panel of the door, this is what we're left with. As you can see here, it's almost like they wanted us to do this work because they made it so super easy for us to remove this panel, which houses the, the window regulator and all the controls for the door. And it gives us this wide open space to lay as much dynamat in here as we want to and uh, very much increases the quality of the sound that we're going to end up with at the end of this project. So I'm going to get the inside of this door panel cleaned up. I'll clean up all the dust and debris that might be in the door or whatever and we'll start laying some dynamat and I'll show you guys how it looks when we're done. So before I lay any dynamat, I just wanted to show you guys and I don't know if you'll be able to pick it up, but I wanted to kind of demonstrate what we're doing here. So you can hear how hollow and, and tinny that sounds, or at least I hope that you can hear that. And I'll show you on the other side of the truck what it sounds like when we close the door. I haven't disassembled this door yet. So I don't know if you'll be able to hear it, but like you can tell when you close this door, that it's hollow and and it it's not uh, it's not solid. You know what I mean? Like once you see the comparison between the two doors, you'll see the difference. So I'll show you guys that here once we got a door finished. All right. So this is what it looks like once we have a finished dynamited door, and hopefully you'll be able to hear the difference in sound. So you can tell that it's just a completely deadened sound. Like there's no, there's no vibration. Even up here where I didn't actually lay any dynamat, it's still reducing that vibration. Sounds really good down there. 
All right, so we'll go ahead and get started on the other door and then I'll reassemble and then we get to start doing some speakers. All right, so now that that's all done, we need to figure out how we're gonna actually install these speakers into these door panels. So uh, this is the factory 619 that we took out and this is the JLC5 that we're putting in. So as you can see, we gotta try and get this into the hole where this was. So I'm gonna show you guys how I go about that process. All right, so we're over at the router table now and the first step of the procedure of making the speaker adapter plates is uh, we need an exact replica or a direct copy of the outline of this speaker. So I've just mounted the speaker to this sheet of three quarter inch MDF and we're gonna use the spiral flush trim bit from 12 volt tools, Joey at 12 volt tools. This isn't a sponsorship or anything like that, but uh, I'm gonna mention him because he's got excellent customer service. He takes care of all of us and uh, we've got a lot of installers in the company here and he takes care of every single one of us. So uh, Joey at 12 volt tools, if you guys want the quarter inch spiral flush trim bit. All right, so as you can see, we now have a nice, perfectly replicated piece of MDF that exactly is the outline of this speaker. And we're gonna use this piece going forward to actually create the actual brackets themselves. And here's what that piece looks like when it's with the speaker not attached to it. So as you can see, it's an exact replica, okay? So we're gonna take this and we're gonna transfer this to the puck board that we're gonna to use to actually build the actual speaker brackets from. So the actual finished product is actually gonna be made out of a product uh, called puck board. There's plenty of different uh, different materials that you can use. Uh, you can use HDPE, you can use expanded PVC, you can use you can use MDF or plywood I guess if you absolutely have to. The industry is trying to get away from using anything that might absorb moisture or anything like that because these are going in the door. Uh, we want to do everything that we can at the production stage to prevent any kind of maintenance down the road and obviously some sort of plastic is the way to do that. That way we can get a strong uh, bracket built uh, that we know is going to stand up for probably longer than the life of the speaker so let's get into it so as you can see here uh, we now have a replica of the MDF template that we built earlier and this this is actually four layers I don't know if you're gonna be able to see that or not yeah so this is four layers so I've actually laminated uh, two layers together and two layers together and then just template taped the two pairs together into one unit so I can work with this whole thing all at once uh, making all my adjustments and making it all pretty and stuff like that all at one time uh, making it super easy for myself so this is of course what our project looks like uh, without our template attached to it and we've got some I'm gonna do a round over on the exposed edge on top and bottom uh, and I'll probably uh, reduce this down a little bit here too so it's not because this is actually a really sharp edge right here uh, from the, the spiral flush trim bit and then uh, we've got to transfer our holes from our factory speaker so that our, our aftermarket bracket can mount in the same location we also need to transfer the mounting holes for the speaker onto here as well so we got a little bit of work left to do uh, but uh, let's get into it Alrighty, so here is our finished project. We have all of our mounting holes uh, transferred over for the speaker to mount to. We've got our mounting holes transferred over to actually mount this plate to the truck. And through the magic of uh, video editing, now we have two perfectly fabricated replicas of the factory speaker, which of course will allow us to mount our JLC5 in the factory location. All right, so I'm gonna send those two out for paint while I start working on the uh, factory three and a half inch tweeter location. Um, I guess it's not really a tweeter, it's more of a, a high range speaker, but we're gonna replace that three and a half inch with the JLC5 tweeter. All right, so the next step in the process is we need to access these three and a half inch uh, speaker locations and that's on both sides of the truck of course so I'm going to disassemble that and I'll show you guys what that looks like underneath there and I'll show you the process that we're gonna take in order to put some tweeters in there so being in the industry that we're in we always have to be prepared for surprises or things that we didn't know are there so I've removed the a pillar as you can see and exposed the speaker location to find that it's been replaced with aftermarket speakers uh, not that it really changes anything in what we're doing, but 
I just want to let you guys know that sometimes as installers, we come across things that we didn't expect. It happens, adjust and move on. All right, so similar to what we had to do for the door speaker location, we're gonna to have to do the same thing for the dash speaker location. So we've got what should have been a factory three and a half inch, but we're actually pulling out a, a set of JBL three and a halves. And in order to, instead of fabricating new brackets to do the same thing, uh, we're actually gonna be using tailor-made uh, brackets uh, they're just a three and a half inch plate. They're from Metra, uh, three and a half inch plate. And it's very, very easy to transfer this mount to this plate and then put holes in it so that you can mount your tweeters in there. So we're going to get right into doing that. Lo and behold, in a matter of minutes, and thanks to the magic of some uh, video editing software, uh, we have two happy little tweeters that are fully prepared to uh, spend the rest of their lives mounted in the dash of this truck. All right, so a little bit of behind the scenes. Um, you might be wondering how we connect these actual tweeters into the vehicle. Um, whenever possible, I would try to avoid having to cut any wiring, cutting any, any factory wire or anything like that. So we actually use these speaker adapter connectors from Metra as well. Uh, and we solder and heat shrink uh, the, the two together. And then of course we wrap the entire thing in Tessa tape to reduce the possibility of any kind of rattling or anything like that. So that's what the tweeters are gonna look like from the backside. Just a little bit of uh, you know behind the scenes stuff that maybe people don't always talk about. So I wanted to show you guys that. And here's uh, another shot of our happy little tweeter all nestled in its home for the rest of its life. Um, I also wanted to, I had an afterthought after that last thing that I just said, uh, why are we using those connectors instead of soldering and heat shrinking the connection directly? Well, this allows us to reverse this process. If this customer wanted to sell this truck or return it, or for whatever reason, he wanted to pull his aftermarket equipment out and put the factory back in, by using those plugs and connectors and stuff like that, it makes it so that it's completely seamless. And once it goes back to factory, you'd never know we were in there. So just to give you guys an idea of what life is going to be like on the back side of these JLC5 six and a halfs, uh, we're using the same OEM speaker connectors from Metra and our connections are soldered, positive and negative on both speakers. And I just thought maybe you guys might like to see what it looks like uh, before it gets put inside the door, uh, never to be seen again. Okay, so this is our finalized project. This is the speaker installed and mounted and everything is done. These doors are ready to be wrapped up. Now, uh, I just wanted to take this opportunity to mention, normally at this stage of the game, uh, we would install what's called fast rings, which is a, a, a foam uh, ring that goes around the outside as well as the backside of the speaker to create a bit of an enclosure uh, for this speaker to live in. Uh, this customer decided not to go that route and uh, that's okay. Uh, but it just would have been the one extra step that we're not doing on this on this door treatment. But this is our finalized project, and we'll wrap up uh, wrap up this aspect. All right, so this is 2018 Dodge Ram front stage completed, and I just wanted to give you guys a finalized picture of what it looks like, and maybe answer uh, the question: uh, Why did I go to so much trouble making that uh, adapter plate look so good? And as you can see here, uh, you can see the silver of the speaker there, which means this is the, the adapter plate that we've built right above it and below it. So if we didn't go to any trouble, definitely making it so that you don't see it, i.e. painting it black, uh, you would definitely see that white shining through there. So that's something that we obviously wanted to avoid. And then the tweeter location, I don't know if you'll be able to see it, but oh yeah, you can. So that's the tweeter location. Again, black background so that we don't see it. It looks as OEM as we can possibly get it. And obviously it's the same thing on both sides, but uh, you guys get the idea. So that's the front stage reassembled, everything put back together. And now we get to disassemble the truck and that's when you're gonna see the most drastic changes. So we'll probably start right about there. All right, so we're gonna get right back into Project Ram here in a couple minutes. I just wanted to take a couple of minutes to uh, maybe have some honorable mentions to a couple of people. I, uh, just a little bit of my background. I, I was with a company for like 16 years uh, prior to this one. And then I came into work one day and they had closed the doors and that was it, I was out of a job. Um, and then I've been with this current company for, I think about, it's gotta be 
four or five years or something like that. Anyways, when I was at my previous company, uh, I was doing the same thing that I'm doing today, except it was at a completely different level. Uh, when I was over there, I thought I was at the top of my game. I thought, okay, this is it. This is what I'm gonna be doing until retirement. I, you know, I thought I knew everything. I, I hate to say that, but that's how I felt. I thought I was at the top of my game, okay? They closed the doors. I started my new job here. And within a couple of days, I very quickly realized I didn't know anything. The people that I work with at this current company, um, and I don't want to mention the name because I don't exactly have their permission to say their name on a, a live format like this, but uh, the people that I work with at this company, they challenge me, they test me, they teach me things that I can't even, uh, at my previous job, I never, I had no idea that this type of stuff was, I didn't even know that it was, I didn't know what my capabilities were uh, until these people uh, showed me what I could do. Uh, they, they have upped my game. Uh, they've challenged me to, to do better than what I was doing before, than what I was doing even yesterday. Like, uh, these guys are an incredible group of people to, uh, to, to work with. Um, and I just wanted to, uh, I just wanted to mention a couple of names. I'm not going to say your guys' last names, but if you guys are watching this video, you're going to know who I'm talking about. Uh, Kyle, uh, he's the first person that I met when I came over to this company, or the first person that I worked with. And uh, he taught me an astronomical amount of stuff, and I wouldn't be doing what I'm doing on this truck uh, if I had never met him. Uh, Ryan, same thing, gave me a great opportunity to do what I'm doing today. Uh, has a, a mountain of knowledge uh, to give or, or teach out to anybody that's willing to learn, i.e. me. Uh, Autumn, uh, I can't say enough about Autumn. He's, uh, he's definitely a huge supporter. Uh, whether I'm in a, a tough situation or don't know what to do next, he's always, like, he's always there. I know that I could bounce ideas off of Autumn and he would challenge me to come up with solutions that would work. Glenn uh, taught me a lot of fabrication skills uh, that I didn't even know we're out there. Uh, you're the man, Glenn. Like, uh, I wouldn't be, uh, I wouldn't be doing half the stuff that I. Well, ev actually, you've taught me basically everything that I've done on the uh, on the speakers so far. Um, Dane, the wiring god that he is. Um, not enough can be said about Dane. Uh, he's he's uh, the, probably the funniest guy I've ever worked with in a lot of years. And then of course, last but not least, and of course this list isn't in any kind of priority, I just wanted to make sure that I got a couple of names out there. But last and certainly but not least, uh, Corbin, man, he's like my partner in crime. I actually work with him at this location and uh, there's probably not a day that goes by that I don't want to kill him. Uh, but he challenges me, he tests me, uh, he, he makes me better uh, at what I'm doing every day and uh, yeah, you know to the public uh, Maybe to the untrained eye. Yeah, okay, cool. We're installing stereos, but like there's an astronomical amount of information that we have to know and uh, You know you have to be You have to be growing every day in order to stay with uh, Stay current with technology and stay up to date uh, and Corbin does that to me. He challenges me every single day. Anyways, I just wanted to say uh, thanks to all those guys. And uh, without you guys, I wouldn't be doing what I'm doing right now. Definitely not at the level that I'm doing it at anyways. Anyways, let's get back to the Ram. We're gonna start tearing it apart. All right, so we're inside the truck now. And uh, like I said at the introduction of these, these videos, uh, this customer wanted to retain his factory head unit and seriously there's no reason why you can't uh, there's so many integrations with this that you want to keep um, you know I don't blame the customer for wanting to keep it uh, there are some solutions out there uh, that would allow the customer to change the factory head unit to an aftermarket one and yes he would still retain all of these features and stuff like that but why when we can do the exact same thing actually better uh, by keeping the factory head unit and the way that we're going to do that the way that we're integrating with the factory head unit is with the ap4 ch41 so i'm going to start tearing this dash down and i'll show you guys exactly what we're doing inside the dash before we get too far into this uh as you'll remember during my introduction video uh there's uh there is already a system in here and we don't know exactly how they've integrated with the uh with the factory head unit uh 
That amp is somehow connected to the factory head unit and we're probably gonna learn that here in a couple of seconds. All right, so as you can see, we have the entire center console disassembled and the radio removed. And uh, if we can get in here and see, you can see that uh, no wiring has been tied into. So we still don't know for sure how that amplifier that's on under the back seat is actually integrated with this factory audio system. So we're gonna keep, uh, keep hunting and see if we can't figure that out. All right, so now we're underneath the dash here. And much to my surprise, as the secondary location to be looking, um, I don't see any uh, I don't see any indicators of a high level in here. So that's the factory amplifier right there, those black heat sink fins. And uh, there's still no indicator anywhere in here that anyone has tied into the wiring. So we'll keep looking. Uh, while I'm down here, I will show you a couple of things. This wiring right here is going to the ignition node. No, it's not. It's going to the trailer brake connector. Um, we didn't install whatever that's connected to. Well, I know what it's connected to, but we won't get into that. Uh, that is not acceptable wiring and definitely not a practice that you will see happening anywhere in this company, I hope. And uh, also while I'm down here, this is the side, the, the driver's side of the center console. There's a nice removable access panel. That'll be where the uh, JL base knob will be installed, flush mounted. All right, the search continues. So a fairly standard third location to be tying into factory wiring to get a signal out of a factory speaker is in the B pillar location where the wiring for the rear door comes into the cab of the vehicle. So in order to properly disassemble this B pillar, you actually have to take off the C pillar and the seat belt and everything like that, which of course means we need to remove that seat. So we're gonna go ahead and do that. All right, so now we have the seat removed. We've got the B pillar cover removed. We're starting to see some evidence of wiring, aftermarket wiring. There's the seat belt removed, the seat pillar cover removed. And so we've got power here and ground. Well, at least they scraped the paint off. It's not bad, I guess. I've seen worse. I've seen a hell of a lot better, but I've seen worse. And so I'm still not seeing any speaker level signal. Uh, we've got a set of RCAs there and it's going somewhere. So the search continues. So now I've removed the 60 side of the seat to carry on our search. And as you can see, we have RCAs and remote and speaker wire, actually. Uh, this is on the passenger side of the truck. I assume it's heading into this B pillar. And uh, okay, so we're gonna keep disassembling until we find the termination of all these wires and then we will finish the removal, I guess. All right, so now I've disassembled this entire side as well. And this isn't an exercise in futility. Even if we don't find what we're looking for, all my wiring or half of my wiring will be done on this side of the vehicle anyway. So this all needed to be done anyways. And our amp rack will be on the back wall. So that all needed to be done anyways too. So, um, I see the retainer clips are missing from one, two, three, four locations. And I have a feeling that, so yeah, here we go. Here's our high level. And it's actually a decent high level, LC7i. I'm actually quite surprised that they used that much of a piece of equipment for just running a sub. There's uh, cheaper options that would accomplish the same job. And it looks like, yeah, so what they did here is they tied into the factory subwoofer outputs coming from the factory Alpine amp. Okay, so that's good. I'm glad that we found it. We needed to find it so that we could uh, completely remove it. And uh, so yeah, I'm gonna get started on that. And now we know where everything is coming and going. Well, now we have a clean slate to start with. All of the aftermarket wiring has been removed. Power wire is gone. High level is all gone. Every ounce of wiring has been removed from this vehicle. And now we get to start from there and we're gonna start with the rebuild process. So we're gonna start with signal. All right, so as you can see, we have our AP4 plugged in and this will plug back into the factory head unit. And there's our AP4 right there. So basically what this device does is it takes the non-variable voltage coming out of the factory head unit, which should reside right here, uh, and turns it into a signal that we can actually use later in the back uh, after we process it through the tweak. Now you might be wondering why we're only using one set of RCAs coming out of this uh, AP4. 
but that's because we're just running uh, one signal back to the tweak and then we're going to process the signal into separate channels at the tweak uh, using the software that comes with the, that DSP. You'll see it'll make more sense as we start assembling at the back half of the truck. Okay so I should have taken a picture or a video beforehand but I just wanted to show you guys that this is what our harnesses look like. This is a factory harness but we've actually integrated eight separate wires into this harness and it's ready to be plugged back into the factory amplifier. But uh, this is this is the effort that we go to with building harnesses. We wanna make it look as factory as possible. And as you can see, like, so this right here is the factory harness wrapped in factory test tape. And this is our harness after, still wrapped in factory test tape, or, or aftermarket test tape, I should say. But the, the attempt is to make it look as factory as possible. So I can plug this back in and you would basically, you, you basically wouldn't even know that I was in there. So I know it's kind of hard to see, but you can see the amplifier just to the left of the screen there. That's with my harness plugged back in, everything fully functional. But the idea is to make it look, and other than the, the blue nine wire that you can see there, you would hardly even know that I was in there at all. While I'm down here and uh, just about to put everything back together, uh, I discussed earlier where I was gonna place the JL base knob, and that's just on the, sun, the side of the center console there. Fairly discreet and out of the way. Looks good. Flush mounted in there, of course. Just wanted to show you the finished product of that. So I've just finished all the wiring to the back of the vehicle. So we've got power and our nine wire conductor as well as the cable for the base knob all ran through the back. I just wanted to show you guys what things look like after I'm done. So all of our harnesses are always, like any wiring that we add, all of the wiring needs to be secured to the vehicle. Even though that this is never gonna be seen after the carpet is placed back down, uh, you wanna know that it's gonna stay secured, it's gonna stay in position uh, we've got the seat rail that runs along right here. We've got to make sure that our wiring stays safe from that. And uh, we use this, the uh, Tessa cloth tape. It's got a, a really strong adhesive on it. We know that this wiring is going to stay in position for a long time. It's not going to rattle. It's not going to move around. It's not going to come loose. Anyways, I just wanted to show you guys what the wiring looks like underneath the carpet, even though you'll never see it once this job is complete. I also wanted to show you what our ground connection looks like. Quite often you'll see People will ground to uh, like seat mount locations or seat belt locations or whatever. Uh, we always try to do the best possible ground. So we've used a, a grounding kit here with a 13 mil stud. The, you know, the paint is obviously scraped away so that it's bare metal on metal. And then of course we cover the entire thing with anti-corrosion gel after to prevent any kind of rusting or corrosion or whatever that might happen. So because we're gonna be removing this back panel here, the black that you see, um, this is actually from factory, basically a sound deadening layer from the inside of the cab to the outside world. It prevents a lot of road noise and stuff like that. So see how we're going to be removing this. We have to dynamat this back wall to take it back to the sound deadened state that it's in right now, uh, but without this panel. Okay. So one of the biggest challenges that we have with these newer vehicles, as you can see, the back wall is, is spot treated with Dynamat now. We've successfully killed any potential road noise that might come through. So now I'm left with uh, trying to figure out how these amps are gonna mount. Plus I have to have a tweak in here as well. Plus I need to have distribution all mounted on this uh, panel that I've built for the back wall. So that's, uh, it's gonna be a task. So let's see what we can come up with here. All right, so after a little bit of adjustment to the original plan, I was actually able to get everything laid out in here as best I could while utilizing as much space as possible. So that's what she looks like and we'll get started on wiring it up. All right, so this is what I call organized chaos. So this is all of the equipment required to run this system. And except we've disconnected the tweeters here because we don't have a tune installed on the tweak yet. So we have to protect the tweeters because otherwise we'd be running full signal to them. But other than those two RCAs right there, this system is uh, ready to be powered up and good to go. So the next step is constructing our enclosure. So let's get going on that stuff.
So right at this point of the job, um, the customer reached out to us and put a deadline on how far we needed to have the job done. Basically the long and the short of it was he told us that he needed his truck back that day. So I had to very, very quickly uh, build my form uh, for the enclosure and get it to the point where it was solid enough because I'm building it out of fiberglass. I had to wait till it was solid enough that I could remove it from the truck and finish the job without the vehicle there, which is fine. We do that all the time. But at the same time, he also let us know that one of the two subs, one of the two JL Dub 6s that he supplied us with, which I should note that he bought off of a friend of his, uh, one of them was blown. Uh, so then we had to wait, it, we had to wait about five or six business days for another one to be shipped up to our location. So unfortunately it totally screwed up my rhythm uh, we had to give the truck back i had to work on the uh, enclosure without the truck there which is weird what that means to you is there's no more video but there's lots and lots of finished product pictures so stay tuned for that and i'll show you how things turned out and i'm going to do a voice overlay on some of those photos all right so this is basically what the amp rack looked like uh as as we were reassembling the seat and then the following pictures are just final pictures of what the enclosure looked like um, we spent a lot of time dressing this up turns out the customer didn't actually want it this dressed up uh, but it looked really good and he was actually surprised with how good it was because he didn't ask for it that way but it turned out So I know that video turned out to be a really long one. Uh, right now I'm at like 31 minutes, so it's gonna be about 35 minutes by the time it's all said and done. Anyways, if you guys like the video, throw me a thumbs up. It super helps me out with my channel. If you wanna see more content just like this, make sure you subscribe and turn on notifications so you get notified as soon as I upload new content. Okay guys, thanks for checking this out.